NASA and its international partners had made some updates to the spacecraft traffic. So here with me today, I have a special guest to talk about some of these updates and what this means for uh, spacecraft now, the crew now, and future spacecraft that will be visiting the space station. Kenny Todd, the uh, Space Station Operations Integration Manager, long title. I think I got that right this time. Thank you very much for joining me today. My pleasure. To talk about some of this stuff. So first of all, let's just talk about... Um, I know that there was the Progress 59 issue, and we were unable, unfortunately, to have that uh, cargo craft, that's the Russian cargo craft, docked to the space station. Can you explain to me, is this um, new update a, a result of the 59 Progress? Absolutely. Our, uh, our uh, Russian colleagues are working very hard to try to understand uh, the root cause of the problem. Um, but as with all things, uh, when you have a major, major failure such as they've had, they, they have to uh, go through their standard anomaly resolution process, so they formed a commission. It's going to take some time to work through that. Uh, when you look at uh, um, some of the upcoming events um, that we had with the return of, of the crew, uh, in addition to that, the launch of the next crew upcoming and, and then uh, and the, uh, the upcoming progress launches as well. Um, they made the decision, and uh, we think it's a prudent one to, uh, to reshuffle their schedule a little bit and provide them the extra time necessary to, to finish their analysis and, and determine the root cause. Okay, and so I know that 41S, which is the 41 Soyuz uh, spacecraft that would be taking, uh, bringing Commander Wirtz, Samantha Christopher and Anton Shkaplerov back home, they would be departing today um, on the original plan. So what, what's the next plan for the, those guys? Yeah, the, uh, um, uh, for us, uh, having our Russian colleagues uh, come out with a new schedule and give us at least a, a feel for when they might try to bring this crew home really gives us uh, a plan for how we, we might want to deal on orbit with the, uh, with the extra time with the crew. Up to this point, we weren't sure if it's a week or two weeks or, or four weeks, and now that we have a little, little more certainty in, in the return plan, uh, we can go and, and start to, uh, to uh, uh, lay in some, some objectives for the crew to try to accomplish. Uh, we've got a lot going on in the summer time frame, uh, particularly in the area of trying to do some reconfigura reconfigurations of station. And so we're, uh, we're looking to try to move some of those activities forward a little bit because we, uh, we know that based on the current Russian plan that, that we're probably going to have a little bit longer of what we, what we call an indirect period where mm -hmm. we'll be at three crew on board the station. And so anything that we can bring in, in that particular uh, part of the schedule back to the left a little bit and try to get that work done with, with Terry and Samantha, that's what we're going to try to do. Okay. And so what does this mean for all the future? I mean, is everything going to be shifting to the right, or will this also mean that maybe um, something changes in one of the, perhaps the next mission is shortened, therefore the rest of it, it kind of stays on track, or, or does everything just completely shift to the right? Because I know a lot of this, the progress in Soyuz, is scheduled months in you advance. Bet. So. I think a, a large part of that is still uh, to be determined. Okay. I mean, quite frankly, um, uh, you know, what we've got is a good set of planning dates right now that gives the entire partnership an opportunity to um, try to try to figure out how best to use the resources on orbit, plus get ready to go uh, figure out when we need to fly fly okay. things. And so uh, when it comes to, to the longer term uh, schedule uh, for our Russian colleagues and how they want to uh, to put that schedule together. I think really a lot of that's going to be driven by what they find in their root cause analysis. So we'll work with the dates they've given us, and I think we'll, uh, we'll, we'll have a good plan. Okay. And so what are we looking at for the next uh, Soyuz launch? At this point, uh, we're looking at uh, the end of, end of July time frame, uh, the middle to the end of July time frame, which um, when you consider that, uh, that time frame, it'll be uh, shortly before we have um, an HTV vehicle show up. Uh, We'll most likely still have SpaceX 7 on board, okay. and so uh, it'll be great to uh, to have the extra crew show up in that time frame. We'll uh, we'll put them to work, and we'll uh, we'll do as much as we can do um, uh, as far as when they'll return and whether or not that'll affect their their return schedule based on when they actually launch. Uh, again, we'll just have to wait and see where our Russian colleagues end up right on now. that. Okay, and also, um, so um, also I'm trying to think of what I was thinking of. Um, yeah, so also with the uh, 
the uh, um, Soyuz being delayed on, on until July, you said. So the Progress 60 was originally scheduled to be launching m in uh, August, so that's been accelerated. Can you explain what the reason was behind that? You bet. Uh, when you look at the uh, at the commonality between the the launchers uh, uh, for the Progress and the Soyuz, uh, certainly um, certainly before we launch a, a crewed vehicle, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it probably makes better sense to say let's launch a cargo vehicle using that same launcher, ensure that whatever corrections, whatever things they've been able to determine through the commission that they wanted to repair, that uh, all those have been. Uh, have been factored in and and, uh, and test them against a, a cargo vehicle as opposed to a crewed vehicle, and so uh, we think it's prudent. We support their approach there, and uh, and we're uh, we're very supportive of of their direction at this point. Okay, and the supply, we're good on supplies aboard space station. At this point, we are, we can last well out into the fall, um, and. Uh, the, the one thing that we're at right now relative to our, our logistics train, uh, by having our, our commercial resupply uh, vehicles here uh, in the U.S., that coupled with our HTV uh, um, that the, uh, the JAXA team provides, we can, we can weather these kinds of storms. Mm -hmm. And so uh, with just what we have on board right now and, and the current uh, state of our logistics train, I think we're in really good shape. Okay. And what can you tell me real quick about the investigation that of what had occurred with 59. Where are we with that? Well, uh, again, uh, based on what our Russian colleagues are saying uh, mm -hmm. uh, and telling telling us through uh, press reports and so forth, and and when we have uh, some folks who are who are participating and and uh, sitting in on some of their discussions, uh, they're clearly focused at this point on the uh, on the interface between the third stage and the, and the progress, and so. Um, I know they're looking at their data and looking at their telemetry and, and seeing if they can get root cause. It's a very difficult uh, problem to solve, and, and uh, certainly, uh, you know, we will support whatever they need, and, and, uh, and uh, we're, uh, we're very supportive of their efforts so far. They seem to be doing a very good job at trying to uh, get to the bottom of the problem. Great. And also, we have the we have the one-year mission that is now underway with NASA astronaut Scott Kelly and the Russian cosmonaut Mikhail Kornienko. Can you tell me if there are any impacts to that particular mission on the schedule changes? At this point, there is uh, nothing that we've defined. There was a little bit of hardware on 59 Progress that our okay. Russian friends uh, lost, but it's uh, not anything we can't work around. So we're uh, we're continuing with our science objectives, and and uh, uh, we'll uh, I, we don't see any major impacts to to the uh, to the plan that we've got for for Scott and Macau. Okay, great. Well, as always, we really appreciate you coming and giving us this update. I know that we have uh, notified the crew aboard the space station, and um, recently uh, Samantha Cristoforetti had a uh, posted a tweet um, about her thoughts on it, and it looks like she um, supports her stay aboard the space station, and all are good to go and continuing their work aboard the space station. So we're good with that. Again, thank you so much for the update. My pleasure. Thanks.